My name is David Fonkin, and I'm the Dean of Science, Engineering, and Mathematics at Austin Community College. Welcome to this episode of The Forum. The Forum is a roundtable talk show that gives us a space to discuss openly pertinent topics concerning ACC and our community with various faculty, staff, and students. Today we will be talking about a growing sector of the Central Texas economy, engineering. There's a tremendous demand for new engineers. For example, in just one specialization, mechanical engineering, the Bureau of Labor Statistics projects a need nationwide for 23,000 new graduates every year for the next 10 years. Salaries are high too. For example, the spring uh, 2019 survey of mechanical engineering graduates from Texas A&M reported an average starting salary of more than $70,000. The 2018 American Society of Mechanical Engineering salary survey reported that the average mechanical engineer earns more than $120,000 a year. Joining me today is Professor Shana Shaw, a Texas A&M engineering associate professor of practice who works as our lead teacher with the Texas A&M Chevron Engineering Academy. Luke Kindlin, a former ACC student and Texas A&M engineering graduate who now works for National Instruments, and uh, current ACC engineering student, Jose Avilas, who transitioned from the academy to Texas A&M in College Station this fall. Thank you all so much for being here today. Of course. Let's jump right in and get started. Uh, Jose, what attracted you to engineering as a profession? <clears throat> so I've been a mechanic for eight years and work in diagnosing and fixing cars, and then uh, I decided to keep going. I'd, I guess I got kind of tired of fixing them and asked myself, why not help build, design, and test? So I chose engineering, decided to keep going. So Luke, uh, tell us what uh, got you into engineering as a profession. So good question. Um, I had kind of a background in IT, um, and basically I enjoyed working on computers and stuff like that, building things up. And I was working a lot and I had a bunch of certifications and things like that and I decided um, why am I doing this all day and then going home and tinkering with electronics and toys and stuff like that and spending time on forums and on the internet and watching how-to videos and everything why am I spending all this all my free time doing that why can't I just make that a career and um, that's why I decided to go into engineering because I can actually do what I want to do. Um, it's fun for me, and I'd probably do it without being paid. <laughs> so Shana, what attracted you to engineering as a profession? Um, I'd say my favorite question is why. So I like to know how things work and why they work that way. Uh, kind of a little bit of a tinkerer, like, like Luke said, and that drove me to not just ask the question, but try to find out that answer. And engineering was a great pathway to do that. Just find out, look around you, and see what makes things work, and, and how they're designed that way, and why they're designed that way, when you put all of the pieces, and they, they bring this cool technology together. So my, because my favorite question is why, I decided to go into engineering. Jose, what makes someone a good engineer? Who? <laughs> it's problem solving. Being able to, for me, I guess what, what I'm learning in school is that we're being taught a problem-solving mindset. And all the courses you're taking are just another tool you add to your belt. So being able to see a problem, determine, okay, what tools do I have in my belt to solve this problem? Being able to do that successfully. I think that's what makes a good engineer. Luke, what about yeah. you? To me, the best engineers I know are not only good with their tools and have process knowledge and kind of this very broad information base. So they're good at, they're good at business, they're good at engineering, um, they're good at all these things. Um, what makes a really outstanding engineer is the ability to not only dive deep on a topic, um, but then also be able to share that um, with others. So um, all of the best chief and principal engineers I know can not only um, go super deep on a topic, but they can also um, explain it to like some of the new guys um, at a very basic level and kind of bring people along like that. Shana. I'll tie in with that. <laughs> I, I agree a lot with what uh, these guys have just said. Um, an engineer is good or what distinguishes the, themselves as a, as a good or even great engineer is that inquisitive ability. but their communication skills as well as their technology skills, I would say, are the combination of what makes a great engineer. We're gonna take a short break. 
We'll be back with more in just a minute. Is ACC for engineers? Yes. Is ACC for thespians? Yes. Is ACC for fans? Yes. ACC is for everyone. Welcome back to the forum, where we are discussing the growing engineering career field in Central Texas. Shana, I have a follow-up question for you. Sure. Why is engineering an exciting field to venture into nowadays? I think one of the, the biggest things that makes engineering exciting throughout all of time is that we literally help the world. We really solve problems. And in doing so, we get to change the world. A lot of people say they change the world. We actually really get to. If you think of technology from 20 years ago, it's almost outdated now. Um, they used to have these things called phones that had a cord attached to them. <laughs> and students or younger people today have no idea what a phone with a cord is. Or one of those little dial it. things. Yeah, or the rotary <laughs> dial, right? Now exactly. we're dating ourselves. But, but that's what I mean about changing the world. In a very short amount of time, technology is rapidly changing, and we get to be on the forefront of that. So I think that's the fun part of engineering and, and what we really get to do use our diversity, um, solve world problems, not just our local problems, and really bring everything together to help solve problems. Luke, have any comments about that? What's exciting yeah. about engineering these days? So, yeah, the, just the increasing pace of technology is really awesome these days. Like, um, going from old cell phones and things like that, yeah, I, I totally agree. Like, the old Nokia's to now is uh, there's a there's a huge difference. Um, now my like I can go on vacation and just bring my phone with me and dial into the office internet and everything and see all of my different test stations on my cell phone. Um, and that's not even surprising anymore. That's just normal, regular life. If I go on vacation, I've got my connection to the rest of the to the rest of the world. Um, but. Sometimes you want to cut that cord, don't you? Exactly, exactly. <laughs> so they were a little too. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. Like the last vacation I went on, um, I decided to. Um, a part of the decision was let's go to a place that's off the grid. Um, so so we we have this imbalance a little bit sometimes, but um, what it really helps us do is. Uh, we have this awesome resource. We can see more information in a day than somebody 500 years ago would see in a lifetime. Um, so kind of, we not only have this awesome resource, but then, uh, like you say, sometimes it can hold us back, or um, we we might be too connected and just never work or never stop working, uh, which could be a problem. But um, kind of the 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 ultimate goal is to have less. Um, I would say a better, a more selection in looking at that data um, and having these connections. Um, obviously, we make connections across cultures with social media and things like that. But um, what we're kind of moving towards in engineering is let's solve some of those big problems like uh, uh, water around the world and um, the other, I think there's 12 bit major grand challenges, grand challenges um, that you'd know more about with uh, kind of intro to engineering. Mm -hmm. But um, I don't know if that answered your question. No, that's great, thanks. Uh, for me, well, since I have an automotive background, what excites me is the automobile. That's something that affects most of us. Almost a lot of us have cars. And just, it's such a cutting edge technology with people going autonomous, electric, and you know, just the goals, they're just being pushed more and more, you know. And engineering, that's what engineering is. Solving that problem, how do we get more fuel efficiency out of these cars? You make them weigh less while at the same time meeting the demands of people. Oh, I want power windows, I want automatic everything. You know, that all kind of adds cost to it, and to me, that's what makes engineering exciting. Just being able to solve the needs versus the the requirements set by the government. It's just a huge teamwork, and like you guys mentioned earlier, it's not just engineers. You're working with other people, and the different sects of life and sections, and I don't know. It's just it's it's interesting to me. So this, this is probably getting ahead of ourselves a little bit, but I think you're involved in some sort of solar car project at A&M, is that correct? I'm in the Baja team. 
of SAE. Tell us about that. Oh, that's interesting. Actually, I ran into that opportunity back when uh, we did a campus engagement trip here at the academy. Um, we did project showcase, and I ran over to the to the Society of Automotive Engineers booth, and they had the Formula Car and the Baja Car. I got to talking to some of the Baja people, and then they told me that when I get there full time, I can apply for a apprenticeship, and so that's exactly what I did. And as an apprentice, I've just been kind of working with the team leads and the other team to solve, uh, I guess in my case, we're doing um, stress testing on components for later use and to do a finite element analysis to see you know, how much uh, stress this thing can take before it breaks. And my job is to write a program that takes that data, processes it, and gets rid of the noise associated with that to kind of give us better data. It's like hitting the worst potholes around Austin all the time <laughs> yeah. on the Baja car. We're going to take a short break now, but we'll be back with more in just a minute. My name is Sydney Campbell. I'm an area of study advising specialist at the Northridge campus for ACC, and we're at ACC Fest 2019. ACC Fest is a way for uh, the community to come out and be able to see all the programs that we offer, talk to different faculty and staff. The event is mostly for probably seniors in high school, really the community, anyone who is seeking a way to a career, maybe wanting to better themselves, get a better job. Resources available to them for the community, for online courses to improve their skills and their knowledge, and then of course increase their income eventually. resources they may not be aware of everything that ACC has to offer and it's especially important for the staff to connect with future students So anyone who's interested in finding a career, bettering their life, or just wants to learn, this is the place you want to be. Welcome back to the forum, where we are discussing the growing engineering career field in Central Texas. Engineering is a broad field. At A&M alone, there are 22 different engineering specializations or majors. We're going to take a deeper dive into some of those specialties right now. Jose, tell us about your choice of major at Texas A&M. Uh, I'm majoring in electrical engineering. Uh, the reason I chose that was because, again, my background, I see the direction that automobiles are going. It's like going all electric, and I decided to go, go that route. Yeah, I'm connecting those dots between your solar car project and <laughs> your, your passion for cars and electrical engineering. Yeah. Awesome. That's awesome. Right. So uh, I understand that you have a summer internship lined up at General Motors, again, connected to your passion for cars. <laughs> Tell us about that and uh, what you'll be doing there. Um, at least for the, the description they gave me was uh, electrical hardware intern. So I'll be working with the team and they'll uh, assign me tasks to work, I guess, together as a team. I asked the gentleman who was interviewing me, and he says, well, it's kind of broad, but if you were to work with me personally, I would help you, uh, I would ask you to help me design the system that detects collision and stops the car from crashing into the next one. So that's what I'll be doing over there in Warren. 
Now, I understand you'll be working in a building that one of our other panelists has some experience with. Is that right? <laughs> Shana, tell yeah, us about absolutely. this. Absolutely. Awesome. Um, I actually spent about 18 years working at General Motors um, in Warren, Michigan, where Jose is going to do his internship <laughs> in the summer. So. Um, the building is called the Vehicle Engineering Center, and you'll probably have an office near where mine was, so that's going to be kind of fun. Um, that is all the feature model product development for G uh, General Motors there in that <laughs> facility, so that's, that's the fun playground, I think, for, for my uh, experience in engineering and in the automotive industry as well. That's really right. awesome. So Luke, tell us about the major you chose. So, um, kind of almost like um, Jose here, I chose um, electrical systems engineering technology. So, um, electrical systems is a whole lot of more, kind of a higher level of electrical engineering. It's more of a systems view. So, you have like IT, um, embedded systems, um, control systems, things like that. Um, and so that's the electrical systems. And then, of course, it's in the School of Engineering. So it's a, it's a full ABED accredited program. And then the last part, the technology part, means that everything is super hands-on. So um, like your, awesome. your um, solar car projects, stuff like that, that's what just about everybody in our major is working on, wow. it are um, kind of these advanced uh, technology projects, but um, in a way that's, that's super hands-on. And um, it's heavily lab-based, so you'll have um, for like a typical class, you'll have a couple hours in the classroom, and then you'll go immediately to lab um, and have several more hours of hands-on. Um, so you can kind of develop an intuition for electrical circuits and what hardware looks like, um, what happens when you burn up a circuit and it smells like plastic in the air. Um, you see smoke. You, yeah, you see smoke, and, and it's, a, it's a lot of um, students kind of helping each other um, with, the, with the assistance of um, a couple teachers, TAs. Um, small classroom environment, um, but it's really like a super applied hands-on engineering degree. So that's why it was a good fit for me because I like making cool stuff yeah. um, and I like working with systems in a way that um, you can use kind of your whole toolbox and um, have a problem and know it's in your toolbox and solve it in new and unique ways. So that's why I chose um, electrical systems engineering or ESET um, as, a, as a major. It's um, it's a lot of fun. There's really good people in there. That's yeah. great. I understand you recently started a job with National Instruments. I did, what, yes. What are you doing there? So I'm a um, R&D test engineer. Um, so what that means is all of our, so I'm an R&D, so I work on all of our new product development um, with RF and analog and um, digital front ends. Um, and I have a couple different projects um, that, are, that are ongoing and new products. So another part of me, um, I guess, is that I'm a huge tech guy. So the latest, greatest technology, the latest phone, um, I got to have it. Um, and one of the things that I like about working in R&D is I get to work on the latest, greatest equipment um, that's uh, usually months to sometimes years away from being a real product and actually being announced. Um, so it's like working on the latest iPhone all the time for me. Mm -hmm. um, and I get to use systems in ways that they're not um, sometimes designed to be used um, and kind of at the very outer envelope of what some of these systems can do. Um, and I also get to work on uh, as part of like a global team um, in all different time zones. So there's um, projects that are um, separate as far as uh, we're working here in Austin on a project and then it follows the sun, and uh, we have another manufacturing center in uh, Malaysia, so it's being worked on then, and then all the way around the world, uh, across the world over to Europe. Uh, we've got another production center there that's making some of our products, and then it p gets passed back to me, so it's deeply collaborative, um, and the sun is never setting on our projects. <laughs> it's, it's really kind of cool. Um, so we get to work really fast, um, with a kind of a high mix, low volume environment. So we make uh, like test um, instrumentation and a lot of the stuff that you'll see in uh, self-driving cars um, and kind of smaller, um, easier to use versions of all that bench top equipment that you'd see in like an electronics heavy duty RF lab. Uh, we make it small so that it sits on your desk um, and make it more approachable for just regular science and scientists and engineers um, so that they can work on it without having to go get a degree in 
um, FPGA design or something like that. They can just buy our product yep. and use it the same day. Oh, that's so great. It's really awesome. Shana, tell us about your choice of engineering major specialization. I don't think I was as uh, direct in my path as these guys. They had a passion and they, they recognized it a little sooner than I did probably. I think I changed majors four or five times while I was at A&M. Um, and I didn't know I was going to work in the automotive industry and, uh, and two other industries as long as I did until the semester before I graduated. <laughs> so um, I had a little bit different pathway to get there where I liked um, design was my focus area. So that's uh, mechanical engineering background. Um, and then for my master's degree, I mixed it up with um, mechanical as well as industrial engineering. And that combination still had a design flair to it, but it was called interdisciplinary engineering. So um, the, the pathways are endless of how you can get to any engineering career that you want. Um, I just happen to to meander around a little bit more than, <laughs> than these guys with their direct path, but, uh, but it, it's all part of the fun. Um, I also liked working on the advanced technology part of it. Um, I spent most of my career at General Motors in advanced product development, designing those future cars that, that are gonna come out on the road, say three to four years uh, from when you're working on it. So it was kinda, kinda ironic that by the time you saw them on the road, you'd already seen them in the in the testing facility yeah. like three years, <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> three years in. So, uh, but it was still exciting to drive down the road and see a part that I actually designed on a car that drove right next to me. Cool. So um, that kind of uh, fun projects that we worked on was really rewarding. Um, but that's mm -hmm. that's kind of my path is, is yeah. uh, starting mechanical after a few other majors <laughs> along yeah. the way and then uh, focusing in on design and then, then really narrowing on the design path uh, for after that with my master's degree. So speaking of fun and meandering paths, uh, I think you told me earlier that your engineering career wandered through Hollywood at one point. <laughs> and, and something about Brad Pitt, if I remember correctly, is that right? Yeah, that was a good story. <laughs> um, we talk about engineering and how you can do so many different types of things and you might juggle and balance projects around the world or different types of projects in any given day or, or month or year. So I had a project that we were uh, launching our first uh, product in the GM performance division, which was the Cadillac CTS V series. So that's the fast cars of the, their, their production level, they're street yeah. legal, but they go fast, basically. Um, it's, it's the fun, fun production cars, not the race cars that you take to a drag strip or anything. And, and when we were developing that first CTS V product, we got a call about three months before production started that said, hey, this is marketing calling. Brad Pitt wants to drive a CTSV in his upcoming movie. And we said, well, sorry, we don't have any cars. And marketing said, I know, but Brad Pitt wants to drive this car in his <laughs> nice. upcoming movie. So we basically had to scramble and they said, we need six cars. And be, being engineers, we didn't have six cars. We didn't have one car, but we still needed to get six cars in a month's time. So we got creative and we said, do they all have to drive? Do they all have to look good? Can they go more than 30 miles an hour or less than 30 miles an hour? Or what do we have to do to, to scrap together six cars? And we were able to do it in one month's time in addition to our normal job. And we were able to deliver those cars for the movie Mr. and Mrs. Smith uh, with Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie. That's awesome. So that was a little side project that got thrown to me just randomly in the middle of almost being in the start of production. So it's always fun to have those, uh, those little side jobs come up every now and then too. And I think yeah. we'd agree as a panel that's a typical day in the life of an engineer, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. just <laughs> giving cars to Brad Pitt, sure. Yeah. I was only disappointed because they didn't let me drive them there and deliver them personally. <laughs> of course. So. That's Other awesome. than that, but yeah. Stay tuned for more information regarding uh, engineering in Central Texas after this short break. I love Sam. He's a little older. He's about eight years old. He's a Labrador Retriever mix, and he's just kind of an old dude, you know, and he just... He's got some years on him, but he's really sweet. I love Will Ferrell. He's my favorite cat. Um, he's the best one. 
I mean, just like any other animal, if they want to adopt, these are available too, you know? And just because they're here in our program doesn't mean that they are not just as adoptable as any other animal that you find out there from any other rescue or any other adoption agency. They're pretty amazing and you would be lucky to have one of them. Welcome back to the forum, where today's topic is engineering in Central Texas. Now we're going to hone in a bit on what Austin Community College is doing to help prepare and train students for jobs in this field. I'd like to play a short video about our Texas A&M Chevron Engineering Academy first, and then we'll dive into our conversation. Uh, solving problems is something I've always enjoyed doing. I see things that need to be fixed and I want to fix them, so that's why I want to be an engineer. I've always been attracted to technology and engineers in a lot of stories, especially modern stories. They're the heroes who help people and solve problems, and that's what I want to do. a and is a pretty prestigious institution, so being able to go to that school and still stay here at home uh, in Austin is, is a good deal. The Texas A&M Engineering ACC Academy is a co-enrollment program. It's a one-of-its-kind program. It allows the students to start at the two-year institution and be co-enrolled and take their engineering courses at the exact same time. This program is a really um, good way to get into A&M, be an Aggie, um, while saving money at the same time. Going to A&M, it's about $15,000 per semester, and the cost is about three to four thousand dollars a semester for me to stay here so it's about a third it's a smaller class size it's really like a training ground you learn what the academic life is going to be like and then you can step out into the bigger picture Texas A&M is internationally known for its engineering programs and, and they have I think 22 different majors many of which are top rated year after year they're also a very exclusive institution this year they had over 49,000 freshman applicants. From those 49,000, they selected and enrolled less than 4,000. So they let in about 8% of the very talented students that applied there. Compare that to our program here. So over 70% of the students that we pre-qualify are accepted and enrolled in the academy. The data shows that students on average that, that are in the academy and transition to College Station to finish their engineering degree actually have a higher GPA than those that start at College Station from semester one. For the engineering academies at ACC specifically, um, Dr. Shana Shaw is a professor of practice. Um, we brought her in, she'd been in the industry for quite a while, so providing that insight to the students actually encourages them to continue. They know what to expect, not just academically, but how it actually works in the field. They're really good about campus engagement. There's been a lot of uh, trips out to College Station. I feel like I'm both an Aggie and a Riverbet. ACC is helping me now by giving me the college experience on a small scale so that I'll be prepared for it on the larger scale. It's a great way to earn an engineering degree at A&M. Again, one of the you know, best in the world right now. Everybody that applies, if you're about there for math and you have the drive and the desire to work hard and have fun along the way, then you are more than ready to start this program. So go for it. The Texas A&M Chevron Engineering Academy is about increasing access and affordability to an engineering degree for our diverse Central Texas student population. Key points are that it's a co-enrollment program, that you'll save money on tuition, that you'll be part of student life at A&M and ACC, that it's a very supportive environment for that stressful and challenging first year, and that when you transition to College Station, you'll transition with a cohort of peers. Jose. Tell us about how the Engineering Academy prepared you for your transition to life in College Station. I can summarize it in one sentence. It's, it let me dip my toes into the pool before I jumped in. Uh, to me, one of the best things and one of the probably the most, uh, I guess, eye-opening experiences were the campus engagement activities. Like uh, one of the first ones that 
But one of the ones that I found the most important was uh, going to the career fairs. I'd never been to a career fair. I'd never, I didn't even have a suit. <laughs> and it's kind of really mandated that everyone wear nice and professional clothing. So I went out, got a suit, and just going around and seeing just so many employers and students, everyone looking for a job. It's just, it's something new for me. You know, and I would also take uh, resumes and I'd ask people for feedback. And I took that feedback and kind of updated my resume. Another one that kind of helped me get into the, the life at College Station was going to the tailgate and football game. That was an interesting experience. That was fun. <laughs> so much fun. Like, um, <laughs> the, the students that came, they also had a, uh, it was just me, it was a busload of us. And some of them liked to play Ultimate Frisbee, so they had a game. At the tailgate, we all had fun, we all ate, and then after that we went to a football game. Never been to a football game in my life. Wow. That's an amazing experience. That's awesome. That's an amazing experience. And then probably the, the third one that kind of me personally affected me was the Project Showcase. That's where I ran into the Society of Automotive Engineers, and that just kind of snowballed into something huge, leading me to an internship now. So that was nice getting used to that. Oh, one more thing would be kind of like while we're here as a student we get used to like the the online tools like the howdy portal eCampus and stuff like that where the advisors are that kind of while we're there in this culture shock of a new town you already have that down that's one less thing to worry about and that that's how the academy helped me out and I understand when you transitioned to the academy this fall, you transitioned there with a cohort of your peers. Oh, yes. There's a couple of friends I still keep in touch with, and although a lot of us are different majors, it's nice to walk on campus and you'll see, hey, that's a familiar face. Hey, how are you doing? Oh, great. Hey, you want to go get some lunch? Go across the street and have lunch, catch up, and just keep rooting everybody on. We're almost there. Yeah, there's about 20,000 <laughs> yeah. engineering students in College Station, so it's yeah. still fun to see everybody that you started yeah. out with here in, in Austin. That's awesome. So Luke, uh, why don't you tell us about how your engineering degree prepared you for working at National Instruments? That's a good question. Um, so uh, like I said before, it's a, um, the engineering degree that I chose. Um, and I say I chose. Um, you said earlier that uh, my, my path was a very direct one. I disagree with that entirely. <laughs> um, it was not very direct. Um, I, so I was in um, ACC before the Chevron Engineering Academy, um, and I hit a couple hiccups along my way for sure, um, where um, what, the, what the process used to be was you do two or three years at ACC, get up to where you're ready to transfer all your credits to a different institution. Um, being in Austin, I thought that was going to be University of Texas for me. Um, in the aerospace program, and th I didn't get in. Um, so I was, I was like, okay, where do I go from here? So I um, applied to a couple different schools. Um, and actually, uh, electrical systems engineering was my second choice um, out at A&M. Um, and I'm so glad that I fell into it. Um, they must have read my application and been like, yeah, this guy's not going to be in aerospace. Um, he's going to do better as a systems engineer. Um, with kind of a, a super applied degree. So um, at NI, the kind of things that I learned in the ESET program, um, kind of the softer skills like project management um, and um, being able to analyze um, test data and things like that with like gauge R&R, &R, um, all of, like they prepare you with, with all those tools. So like Six Sigma certifications, um, you start out having certifications that people in your industry might not even have. Um, so that, that was a big thing. Um, another thing at um, Austin Community College that was really awesome was the, kind of the small class sizes. Um, that's how I was able to keep a good GPA um, <laughs> going forward was having a small class size, and I wasn't in a, in a room with 200 other people learning calculus. It was um, Mr. Molina um, over at the Northridge campus um, teaching 30 of us at a time, um, and really getting like some solid foundations, some solid study skills, um, getting a small cohort, um, and um, kind of teaching each other as far as going through the homeworks and things like that. 
um, was super helpful to me. And then moving that out to College Station was, um, it was a little bit of starting, starting from scratch, um, where you were able to find a whole bunch of people. Um, your, kinda, your cohort followed you. Um, I only knew a couple, like a handful of people. It was like two or three um, that, were, that I knew from ACC out to Texas A&M. So it was, it was a pretty big awakening for me. But all of the foundation that I got out at, um, here in, at ACC, um, as, fa as far as um, doing the study cohorts and everything like that, followed me out there. And it was a really good foundation for success once I made my way out to A&M. So Shana, um, Luke and Jose have had slightly different experiences in terms of how they got to College Station. We talked about the word transition with Jose mm -hmm. and transfer with Luke. Would you talk a little bit about the right. difference and, and how the academy facilitates that? Absolutely. Um, we're very particular in using the word transition <laughs> yeah. in the Chevron Engineering Academy program because you're an Aggie from day one in that program exactly. and you're co-enrolled in both A&M and ACC. So you don't have to apply to A&M. You don't have to try to, you have to pass, of course. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to try to get into A&M because you're already in A&M, in awesome. the College of Engineering. So uh, there's basically three pathways to get to A&M. The way I went, actually, because my first degree is from A&M, I went to A&M right out of high school. So that's still a, still a valid path to get there. And then the, the next way is a transfer path that, that Luke did where you go two to three years at a community college or another university and then decide to finish your degree at a and But at that point exactly. you have to apply. But that exactly. you have to apply and I have to And as Luke experienced, sometimes you get accepted and sometimes you don't. Exactly. Right. Sometimes yeah. the answer is no. You always yeah. get an answer. Sometimes even the answer is no. Even if you're very well qualified and even if you're a really good student, the, the top level engineering schools are just that hard to get into right now. Yeah. Um, you spoke of the less 8% that got in as freshmen incoming to the A&M class this mm -hmm. semester. So yeah. um, that's why I think the Engineering Academy program is, is that perfect blend. You get to stay in town a little longer, yeah. maybe save some money on rent if you still live yeah. with your parents, <laughs> yeah. maybe definitely save some money on tuition because of the ACC class load, and then transition is the key word there for uh, for finishing your degree in A&M. And transition is exactly what Jose is going to do. You're just going to pack up and move to College Station when you're ready. There's no application, no uncertainty. Yeah. In, in many ways, this is the safest, most secure way to get an engineering yep, degree. He's already put in six uh, yep. months in College Station mm -hmm. um, and, and well on his way to finishing that bachelor's <laughs> yeah. degree. Yeah. Yeah. So, Shana, could you maybe summarize how the academy prepares students for transition to College Station? Yeah, I think it's uh, creating kind of a family environment is the, is the biggest summary that I can think of um, in how we really work behind the scenes to, to create a nice transition for the students. Um, as they talked about their smaller class sizes, we might have a classroom of, of up to 100 students here at ACC for this program, but it still feels small because we do a lot of work in teams of four or teams of two. Um, and then the campus engagement trips that the guys have mentioned. Um, yeah. It's about three times a semester where we go as a group to College Station. So it's not like you've never been to the College Station campus and then you get in this program and then a year or two later you get to go to campus. You go to campus the first couple weeks of, of, of admission into this program. Um, and I'd say about 30 to 40 percent of the students in the Engineering Academy had never even been to College Station before. And so that ties back with increasing the uh, availability of an engineering degree from College Station um, in this area of, the, of, the, of Central Texas. Because so many students, even though it's 100 miles away, have never even been there and never even seen the main campus of over 5,000 acres. Um, so we, we get them ready. A lot of behind the scenes work goes into it to help them prepare, to feel like they're part of a family, to know people when they walk around on campus, to walk around. We, we purposely make them walk a lot, even the first few trips, <laughs> yeah. because they need to see the size of that campus and they, and they need to say, oh, if I have a, a class here and I live on this side of campus, I better leave a half an hour early <laughs> yeah. to start walking across campus. So they get kind of the lay of the land. They get the, the feel of the campus environment by being there. 
um, with these different trips and with always doing it with their group of, of, of peers in that little family environment. So I think that helps. Um, I know when I went to a and I, I tried to memorize where the buildings were on the map and I, I tried to walk around um, the week before school started without looking at my map. I was like, yeah. that was my goal, to not look at my map, <laughs> to <laughs> feel like I, I thought I was already fitting in there. These students don't have to even worry about looking at a map. They already know where their buildings are because they've mm -hmm. been, been there three, three, you know, three times a semester all the way through the academy program. That's so, great. So, and it, it, we even have students that become roommates um, mm -hmm. w when they transition to College Station. So there's a lot of, a lot of things that happen to try to ease that transition and, and try to help them uh, know what to expect mm -hmm. and not have it maybe as much of a shock as, as Luke did when, totally. when he went or when I went at, straight out of high school. Yeah. Yeah, and speaking of, of that transition, how do our students do academically when they transition to College Station? Well, we don't have any graduates from our Austin Academy program yet, but we have uh, tracked GPAs because, you know, we're data people. <laughs> and uh, we do, we, we have shown that uh, GPAs are actually slightly higher for Engineering Academy students from Austin than if you went to College Station directly and started that College of Engineering degree um, from day one or as compared to transfer yeah. students. Either. That is, yeah, it's not a surprise. Yeah. Um, yeah, just be able to like transition and um, I know at least I found it a little bit easier to go to the classes there because um, the standard was pretty, pretty high at Austin Community College um, and transferring in with a couple credits and things like that, it, um, yeah, it was, it, was, it was a good transition. Like it wasn't um, a huge sea change of this is, 10% harder or something like that, um, you're able to just jump right into classes. Um, and ACC pushes you up to the, like, the correct level of academic achievement. There's no, um, there's no correcting or anything like, like that, that that has to happen in College Station once you do um, transfer or transition. Um, it's you're just ready. like, it's just, you're, you're already ready and you just, it's a smooth transition. I'll add something to that. And for as the academy students, for me, sometimes it's hard to like just come up with a random study group of random people you don't even know. As an academy student, in a couple of my classes, I had one or two people that I already knew from ACC. That's just already a familiar face. As soon as you walk into the door and it's the same class, who are you sitting next to? That person. And then now you can build a study group fairly easily right there without knowing anybody. First week. Yeah, Shana, it sounds like collaboration is a big part of the life of an engineer, both as a student and in industry. Absolutely. Um, and you know, study groups being maybe the first example. So what sort of things do you do in the academy to help students learn to work in teams, to collaborate, study together, be successful? Sure. A long gone are the days where an engineer sits at his desk all day doing calculations and then throws it over the wall to the next engineer or the next uh, person in line on, on the project. Um, we start in our first semester in the academy program uh, in project-based teams. Uh, even, even homework assignments we, we work on in teams. Uh, some individual assignments, some team assignments. So we're cultivating those communication skills as well as the technical skills. And that is what makes a well-rounded engineer and, and a, a better engineer now than, than just emphasizing technology only. Where some people used to think of just engineers as, as technologists, but now it's more about communication as well as the technology. And I think we do a good job of that from day one and working on project teams. Thank you. We're taking another break, but we'll be back in just a moment. Welcome back to the forum where we are talking about the Texas A&M Chevron Engineering Academy. Texas A&M has an international reputation for excellence in engineering and this unique co-enrollment program lets students take engineering courses taught by A&M faculty for A&M credit at our Highland campus along with math and science and other core courses taught by ACC faculty. Shana, tell us about the path that brought you from A&M engineering student to A&M professor. 
An interesting path. Um, well, I got on a long road <laughs> and I had some time, so I headed down the highway. And the highway took me up to Michigan for a while. And yes, it was cold. And then I decided, you know, for me personally, instead of just making products or whether they're hardware or software or cars or manufacturing assembly lines or whatever the product is, um, I was always teaching. I was tutoring, I was helping in schools, I was coordinating a program that we had with General Motors in the local schools in the Detroit area. And this tug at me just kept saying, hey, you know, you're teaching more and more, why don't you just do that? Um, and really for me it was a bigger way to give back on a broader scale. I like designing parts, but I kind of got tired of that after a while. I like designing manufacturing assembly lines for vehicles, but I kind of got tired of that after a while. I never got tired of the teaching. I never got tired of working with the students and trying to inspire more students to consider a technical career like engineering or to even just inform them about what engineering is because a lot of people still today don't know what engineering is. So we grow up learning about, oh, I want to be a doctor or a lawyer or a professional sports figure. <laughs> um, we know about those because we grow up hearing about those. Most people never hear about oh, I want to be an engineer, or what is an engineer, or what can you do with an engineering degree. So on a broader scale, I wanted to spread that word a little bit more and try to inspire more people to consider a technical career and fill that shortage that you spoke of earlier in not only Central Texas, but all around the world, where engineers are at a shortage because we're going to develop things so fast and technology is changing so fast. We need more engineers to create the next generation of, of amazing, wonderful products to serve the human need. And so that's kind of what drove me. And I moved back to Texas um, where, I was, where I grew up and I came back and I decided to start teaching. So in fact, I started teaching at ACC. I taught in several departments here. I worked in a few different other departments as well and I pieced together about five to six jobs um, in the ACC uh, career pathway that I had that eventually led me to uh, being considered for this uh, Chevron Engineering Academy program and they picked one faculty member to, to teach these A&M classes here in Austin and I was going to make sure that I was that one that they picked. And luckily I had an A&M engineering degree. I was from Texas which helped. Um, and then I, I had the SEC experience, so I, I kind of had a good, good resume at that time to piece it all together to be the one person they picked to teach these classes here. Well, I have a follow-up to that. So how does your industry experience, you know, your years with GM and others, how does that inform your teaching? How does it affect how you talk about engineering to your students? Well, we have a group of professors at A&M in the College of Engineering called Professors of Practice. And basically what that means is we have not only teaching experience as professors, but we also have industry experience. And that combination I think is pretty powerful in the classroom. I think a lot of students really relate to all of my little stories that I bring from industry. Um, and honestly, not as many people uh, percentage wise are going to go into research and development or get a PhD in engineering. Most people are really going to go and get a job. So. I bring that job experience in and infuse it into my classroom. So I think the students really participate well. They really can relate to those, those stories that I tell um, because I have that industry experience in three different industries. And so I think it makes a more active classroom and I think it makes it myself even more relatable um, just because I have that industry experience. And, and I'm thankful that A&M has focused that. Um, in their College of Engineering because not all schools bring that into the classroom. I understand you've taken other steps to bring industry into the classroom as well. Yes, we have uh, local industry nights where we bring Austin area engineers into our classroom and have a panel discussion similar to this one. We also have industry nights that we broadcast from College Station into our Austin classroom here. And we have um, sometimes trips and things like that, um, even, even individual speakers that we're, we're going to bring in. So there's a lot of uh, industry application where we infuse it into the classroom. Um, at A&M, they go 
uh, in depth as well, where they're going to have little mock interviews, even where they they bring industry people in and they they let you try to practice your interview skills because they know that when you really need to turn it on, when you're really trying to get a job in a few years from now, whether it's a, a internship or or a full time job, then you want to be polished, poised, and professional by the time you get to those those types of real interviews. So they give you opportunity to practice. So. Those are a few of the things that we do to infuse that industry into the classroom and, and, and ho host dif different sessions like that. Thank you. Luke, uh, what, uh, what parting advice would you give to someone who might be thinking about engineering as a profession and, and looking at the academy as a possibility? I would say go do it. Give it a try. Um, it's, so I'm a huge fan of the academy. Um, I learned about it just like a little bit too late, and it came about a year too late for me, uh, maybe maybe two years too late. Um, it is just a fantastic opportunity to not only get into engineering, um, which is, uh, engineering is a lot bigger than any of us um, think about. Um, there's, if you say, uh, for example, if you're a, a an English major or something like that, you can go into tech writing and do very well for yourself. Um, and, and you're in engineering um, and you don't ne necessarily have to have those awesome physics scores or math scores um, or any of the like our normal, like our hard sciences. Um, you, can, you can make just about anything work with engineering. Um, engineering is more of a, a frame of mind. Um, than an exacting set of technical specifications. It's a very broad degree. Uh, if you have an engineering degree, uh, you can go into law, um, you can go biomedical, um, basically anything you can think of, you can make an engineering degree work um, and very well for yourself. Um, so yeah, yeah. Once you once you apply and you're accepted and everything, um, just just really the 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 way to really succeed um, is to spend some time down in the learning lab, uh, get your homework done um, with a bunch of peer mentors and your classmates and um, kind of form those study cohorts, uh, move that out to A&M, kind of continue that um, and go to those career fairs. And there's just lots of opportunities to do very well. Um, and it's a really unique program that we have here because it makes it really affordable. Um, Usually engineering is not a very affordable to get into, uh, but it really pays off. Um, here at ACC, it's very affordable, and then it pays dividends later on. Thank you. Jose, what about you? What advice would you offer to a student who's thinking about engineering as a major or the academy as an opportunity? Um, for me personally, I think I can ask a lot of other engineers. Engineering may not be the easiest thing, but there's something that's just so amazing when you figure out that how much you can accomplish as a team and working together. So for me, it was kind of a tough road, but I just, again, so surprised at what, how far I've come and how I'm right there, just close to my dream. I just got a couple more years to get it done. When it comes to the, when it comes to the engineering academy, for me, financial was definitely a big hiccup in my road. So going to the academy definitely saved me a lot of money, allowed me to save up to get to my first semester and go, go that route. But I think one of the other more important things when it comes to this academy is Professor Shaw's uh, experience that she brings into the classroom. To me, that's something very unique that I haven't had in another classroom. I've never had to get up and present a project to the class, which is extremely nerve wracking. But it's something that I'm very glad I got out of my chest. So when I went to the career fairs or when I went to the, uh, the interview process at GM, I had been there before. Maybe not in front of, I had to say to myself, well, if I can do it in front of 60 people, I can do it in front of this one person. Yeah. And those yeah. are little things that I've pieced together that kind of helped me out that I've learned in this academy. You know, so follow your dream. Do it. It's doable. Thank you so much for watching the forum today. We hope you learned a little something about the engineering industry in Central Texas, as well as our wonderful track to pursue that career through the Texas A&M Chevron Academy here at ACC. For more information on the program, please visit austincc.edu slash tamuacademy. 
Thanks to our esteemed guests for participating in our discussion. And again, my name is David Fonkin, Dean of Science, Engineering, and Mathematics at Austin Community College. Stay tuned for more episodes of the forum only on ACC-TV.